Anyways, before Delphine rudely interrupted me. Hey girl, hey. I know, I know. I got some explaining to do because I have not posted a video in two weeks and I'm sorry. Um, my job sent us back to the office. So I'm trying to get readjusted to working in an office again and having to wake up and do this and do that. And my life has just been very chaotic for the past two weeks. I am back. And I have something very special for you guys today. Um, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you are new, thank you for, you know, clicking this video. Um, so, um, if you are a returning subscriber and you did watch my 21 questions video, um, you did see in the video that I literally told you guys that I am obsessed with true crime. And I am. I love it. I go to sleep to it it is taking over my life so i have decided that i what um but i have decided that it's a lot of cases that i would like to be covered that i don't see covered it's a lot of cases that i don't know but look we just we, we gonna start it we gonna see where it goes okay this is just something that i want to do so we're gonna start it and we're gonna see where it goes if you watch true crime videos you already know the setup, so you know how this is about to go. I shouldn't have to explain. Um, today, we are going to talk about a case that I am personally invested in. And I'm personally invested in it because I live in the city where everything occurred. Like, everything took place literally like 15 minutes away from my house. So, it's very personal to me. Um, so, we're, gonna, we're just going to talk about that today. So today's person is Madame Lollery. You guessed it. You guessed it. It's Madame Lollery. So we're just gonna get we're gonna get a little bit into her backstory. Talk about all the terrible things that she did. If you haven't heard of Madame Lollery, girl, have you been living under a rock? Because she is one after what's her name? Um the Hungarian Countess Elizabeth Elizabeth something I, don't, I can't I can't think of her name right now but everyone kind of gets their stories confused and they are actually in the running of most sadistic female serial killer of all time I'll talk about Elizabeth in another video maybe because she was sick in the head but Girl, Madame Lollery was even sicker in the head, if you can believe it. Marie Delphine McCarty was born March 19th, 1787. So, my girl is a Pisces. And Pisces, this is your L. Hold it together. Um, She was born in New Orleans. So, that's my L. So, we even. To Louis McCarty and Marie Jean McCarty. Um, because of the multiple Marie's throughout the story, I'm going to be referring to, yeah, it's, um, it's three Marie's throughout the entire story. So I'll be referring to Madame Lollery as Delphine for, I want to say most of the video, but probably the entire video because saying Madame Lollery over and over again, it's just gonna be too much. So, um, if you hear me say Delphine, that's what I'm talking about. Um, she was a second generation Irish born American. Um, so her father was first born when her grandfather immigrated to the United States from Ireland. And she was born during the Spanish colonial period in New Orleans. So that's really just a time where everything was pretty much occupied by Spain. And her um, her lifestyle was pretty, it was pretty good. Um, she was born into a pretty, you know, pretty good family. She was pretty, I don't wanna say wealthy, but she was pretty wealthy. Her dad was a knight of the Royal and Military Order of St. Louis. 
and her mother was a well-known socialite. So her mom would throw like these very, very lavish parties. And the whole town would just be so excited to go to her house for these parties. Like these were pretty big parties. And during the parties, um, Delphine and some of the other neighborhood kids, they would like, they would steal the men's shoes and some of their clothes and it was it was a prank and the people who the clothes belonged to they would be so drunk that they wouldn't even realize that their shoes and stuff were missing so they would just walk home barefoot and in their like undershirts like under their suits and stuff so that was just like a little prank that they like to pull on people um the parties would last like all throughout the night um it would not be like a two hour party three hour party like these parties will last almost until the next morning like they were they were hot okay my girl was running basically like a nightclub out of her house so everybody would come over they would enjoy the parties and stuff some people would get pranked everything like that cool now Marie's mom would end up, Marie, sorry, Delphine's mom would end up passing away in 1807. And when she passed away, her father did what most McCarty men eventually ended up doing. Um, they would end up inter, I don't want to say interbreeding, but they would end up um, having a little bit of relations with the free black women and they would create babies so they would either have kids with with uh with free black like free black women or with um mixed women which led to like a lot of biracials and a lot of what they like to call um quadroons so if you don't know what a quadroon is, a quadroon is basically just like a person that is one fourth black. On June 11th, 1980, I'm sorry, not 1980, what am I talking about? June 11th, 1800, Delphine married her first husband, Ramon, when she was only 14 years old. And her husband was an officer of the Spanish crown. And he was also 35 years old. Um, he was second in command to the governor of Louisiana at the time. And when he was coming to accept his new job, he and his uh, then wife traveled to Louisiana from Spain. And during their travels, his wife ended up getting terminally ill and she did not survive her illness and because she didn't survive her illness um it kind of like really upset ramon so he started to rebel against the spanish crown so during their voyage to america she ended up passing away and it just it never sat well with him regardless of his new marriage to delphine he was still just kind of upset that his first wife ended up passing so um, he started to rebel against the crown and during his rebellion, um, this was at a time where Spain and Africa had an agreement to where they would not trade slaves. And Ramon was like, yeah, we finna trade slaves. So he just kept doing it because that's what he wanted to do and because he was unhappy about, you know, the tragic death of his wife. So he continued to trade slaves against Spain's order which ended up kind of like pissing off all of the Spanish royalty. So Delphine ended up, she was pregnant at this time and she decided to travel to Spain, you know, because she was of a high status. So she traveled to Spain and she went and had a talk with the queen of Spain at the time and after their talk, the queen ended up issuing Ramon a royal pardon. So basically, like, they forgave him for everything that he did. 
but he did lose his position as um he did lose his position as an officer of the Spanish crown because he was just doing too much at the time and they were not no they were not with it so they told him they were like yeah you're not an officer of the crown anymore you do not have status because you defied our orders but you know you get a royal pardon so you're okay cool so after his wife did that for him um she traveled to Havana Cuba to wait for him to get there so that they could go back to New Orleans together and Ramon actually got on a boat well he got on a ship in Bordeaux France and while he was on the ship and they were traveling back to Cuba so that he could meet up with Delphine to go back to New Orleans um tragically the boat crashed well the ship crashed and he died as a result of it so delphine stayed in cuba um because she was due to have her baby at this time so she stayed in cuba to give birth to her baby that she named yeah her name is marie delphine francisca but I'm not going to mention her at any other point throughout the story. So for right now, we're just going to keep her name as Francisca. Because that's why I said I was going to refer to her as Delphine. Because it's just so many Maries in this story that it's insane. So while Delphine was in Cuba following the birth of her daughter, Francisca, um, she also got Francisca baptized. And she also buried Ramon. Um, following, you know, the burial of Ramon and whenever she was okay to go back to New Orleans, she decided to just go ahead and go back home. And when she got back home, the Spanish colonial period in New Orleans was over and it was officially under American rule. So things were just a tad bit different. March 19th, 1807, on her 20th birthday, she married Delphine married Jean Paul Blanc and he was a businessman but he was like a one of those like shady businessmen which was no bueno uh Delphine's mom at this point had just passed a couple of weeks prior so Delphine had actually just recently lost her mother around the time that she got married but she decided to marry Jean Paul Blanc and he was he was a little sketchy um he was very tied in with the oh shoot i wasn't supposed to do that um he was affiliated with um two pirate brothers and their names are jean and pierre lafitte and they were pirates so obviously they was up to no good they was out here robbing people so he was basically hanging out with some scammers so that made him shady and one could assume that when he decided to marry Delphine it was because she had just come into a large fortune following her mother's passing. So when her mom passed she received a third of the estate that was split between her and her two other siblings and she received um $33,007 which is $2 million in today's currency and she also received a plantation downtown um yeah she received a downtown plantation that was like off like on the bank of the Mississippi River she received 52 slaves and she also received a livestock farm and some farming equipment and everything to be able to take care of it and tragically her dad ended up passing around this time as well and when her dad passed she also earned another plantation a property in the french quarter and 26 slaves so miss girl had a lot of slaves her husband john was also active in the slave trade in addition to you know being a part-time pirate and he ended up purchasing a townhouse on the corner of Royal and Conti Street to accommodate the four additional children that he had with Delphine. 
Um, not, not to mention that she also still had Francisca from her first marriage. So she had four additional children with Jean and they moved into, well, they split their time between the townhouse on Royal and Conti and one of the plantations that she inherited from her parents. So less than a year after the Battle of New Orleans, um, John ended up passing away at the age of 50 and Delphine was 28 at the time. And when he died, he actually left her $160,000 in debt and that's about 2.5 million dollars in today's currency which is a lot of money that's a lot of money and it was because he was just a shady businessman he you know had he didn't have that much money so he was stirring up debts that he couldn't afford and when he passed it ended up all falling on his wife so to protect her assets she ended up like selling a lot of his um she ended up selling a lot of his property a lot of his things um she ended up she would either give it back to the state or she would like auction it off um there was one property that she auctioned off and she actually like turned around and bought it because she didn't want to lose it um she even sold some of his slaves and then she ended up going back and buying them at a cheaper price which is so insane to me so throughout all of this she ended up selling all of his property over the next 10 years just to pay off the debt so that it wouldn't cut into her inheritance that she got from both of her parents because you know she was not trying to lose that actually i lied oh my god her dad was still alive her dad was still alive i'm sorry he didn't pass i'm so sorry um so well, he, he he did die. I'm sorry. He did die. Um, he didn't die then. Um, he died after her husband died. So when her father died, he, he died in 1824. And when he died, um, all of his children received an inheritance. And I'm sure that what I listed was included in Delphine's inheritance. And remember when I mentioned that they would like procreate with the with the free you know free black women or free mixed women so he ended up having an outside child not that long after Delphine's mom passed away so that child ended up getting a piece of the inheritance and she received five thousand dollars and two slaves I don't know why he gave her two slaves, but he gave his two slaves. Um, I don't know why you would give a partially black woman two slaves, but he got it. So he gave her two slaves and that was it. So then in 1826, um, Delphine ended up taking one of her children to a local chiropractor because they were having like back troubles. And when she took them to the chiropractor, she took them to Dr. Louis Lollery. And they ended up, you know, flirting with each other, striking up conversation, you know, all that stuff. And she ended up, you know, dating him, I guess. And at the age of 38, Delphine gave birth to her sixth child and she named him Jean-Louis. She named him Jean-Louis Lollery. I'm guessing she named him after her second husband and her father. She gave birth to her sixth child, Jean-Louis, and when she gave birth to him, it was actually out of wedlock. And you know, that was very frowned upon, especially since she was a member of high society so after she gave about five months after she gave birth um she and dr lollery ended up sorting their affairs and everything drawing up their contracts whatever was necessary and they went down to a notary and they basically got married and when they got married they backdated the marriage six months 
so it wouldn't seem like Jean Louis, their son, was born out of wedlock. And I'm pretty sure, as you guessed, um, the couple did not really have a happy marriage. It was pretty toxic. Um, they would always like fight, and then um, one person would threaten to leave and then they would fight some more and then the other person would be like, okay, I'm out. They would leave and then they would just like, you know, work their differences out and get back together. And this would happen like several times. And when Dr. Lollery was sending letters and everything back home, because he was young, he was, she was 38 and he was 25. No, she was 38 and he was 23 which is disgusting. So he was pretty young and he had just finished his like chiropractor studies and he moved to New Orleans to actually make like a good name for himself. So he would write letters back home to his family and everything and he would tell them like, you know, everything that was going on. And he would often mention like the very toxic relationship that he had with Delphine. And he would also mention like some of the things that she did that just kind of rubbed him the wrong way. Um, one of those things included like the way she would treat her slaves. So that was like the first documented account of her treatment of her slaves. Um, the townspeople were really, they didn't think that she, they actually praised the way she treated her slaves because she treated them like people. And they didn't know that it was all an act because they weren't aware of what was going on in the house. And they were like, oh, she's just so nice to her slaves. Like, that's how you should be. You shouldn't be like whipping them all the time. But baby, they didn't know. They didn't know anything. In 1831, Delphine purchased property located on Royal and Governor Nichols, which would then be known as the infamous Lollery Mansion. And it is still there today. It's not moving. Um, it is still there today. Um, back then, Governor Nichols, because he wasn't governor yet, so they couldn't name the street that. So it was actually on the corner of Royal and Hospital. On November 16th of 19, girl, November 16th of 1832, um, Delphine actually filed for separation from Jean-Louis. Not Jean-Louis, oh my God. November 16th, 1832, um, Delphine filed for legal separation from Dr. Lollery, um, stating spousal abuse. She said that he was very abusive towards her and she said that he actually like physically like abused her in front of witnesses. And I'm assuming that the witnesses were like the slaves and everything and they were gonna corroborate her story. So because of this, not long after, Dr. Lollery was like, yeah, you crazy, I don't have time for this, I'm out. So he ended up packing up all his things and he moved to Plaquemine Parish. And Plaquemine Parish is about a 30 minute drive from Lollery Mansion. It's actually not that far from where I live, it's like, not even five minutes, it's like right there. So from downtown, it's a pretty it's a pretty great distance. So he was a he was a little bit a ways away from her. Not too close, but not too far. He just, you know, permanently moved there and he just let it go. Um they were still like legally married, but she just filed for separation and he just moved away. So on April 10th of 1934 um Lollery Mansion actually caught on fire and the neighbors were coming outside they were trying to you know help her save her valuables help her save everything and from what the spectator said they actually said that she was in the house alone they had no idea that you know anybody else was with her she appeared to be in the house alone I should say that she appeared to be in the house alone so they helped her like gather her valuables and everything. And while they were in the house, they ended up coming across some of her slaves and they were deceased. And not only were they deceased, but they were deceased prior to the fire. Ooh, that rhyme. 
but yeah they were already they were already dead so because of this discovery the townspeople lost their damn minds they started busting the windows flipping shit over like they completely lost it they were like oh we can't believe that you were just so disgusting like this is just no this is not it so they started tearing up the house i mean tearing that bitch down oh i shouldn't have said that but yeah they was they was tearing that house the hell up they was tearing it up they were disgusted with her and sis was like lol y'all crazy i'm out so she hopped on her stagecoach and when she got into her stagecoach, she just knew like she was done for. So one of her slaves that was still alive was actually her hired stagecoach. So he got her to Lake Poncha, to a dock in Lake Poncha train, which may have been like about 10 minutes away from where she was. So the carriage took her to the dock at Lake Poncha train. She boarded the ship and she got up out of there real quick. And she ended up going to France, Paris to be exact. So let's talk about the treatment of the slaves during all of this before the fire started. This is where it gets kind of bad. Um, disclaimer, it's some very graphic information that I'm about to go over. Um, if you have a weak stomach or if you do not want to hear this, I would suggest like fast forward in a few minutes because it's a lot like it's a lot so if you're not trying to hear it I strongly suggest that you you know fast forward a little bit because I'm about to go into detail of some of the things that she would do to her slaves so I'm about to talk about it y'all better fast forward if you don't want to hear it okay so it was rumored that in order for her to keep her youth, she would take the blood of her slaves and she would like put it on her face, which is so weird. Like she would take, she would put it into like a, um, she would put the bowl, she would put the blood into a bowl and she would take like a makeup brush. Oh, this is so awkward. She would take a makeup brush and she would like apply their blood to her face like it was a face mask and she would like leave it on for a while and then wipe it off. And it's alleged that it was supposed to keep her youthful and young looking and all that. That's one thing, which is just so disgusting to me. Um, another thing that they noticed was that her enslaved cook was actually chained to the oven. Like, Lit like physically chained to the oven like she had like a chain around her ankle that was attached to the oven she also she she died during the fire because she was literally chained to the oven um the mansion is actually like a three-story house so the first floor was just like, you know, regular living room, dining room, all that jazz. The second floor was like bedrooms and quarters and all of that stuff. The top floor was basically a torture chamber. Yeah, so the top floor was where everything went down, like everything, and it was some pretty awful stuff it was so awful oh my god like i don't know how i don't know how people can live with themselves after doing some shit like this like this is just it's crazy like okay so she had this oh my god i don't even know what to call it she had a device that sounds like a good enough word she had this device and this device was like a. It was like a pulley system kind of thing. And she would use this device to stretch her slaves to the point where like their bones would start cracking, the flesh would start tearing. It was just awful. It was just so awful. Like I could not imagine. Cause baby, if I I always say if I had to be a slave during that time, I would not have lasted. 
I would I would not have lasted long at all. They would have had to take me out of the immediately. And my suffering. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Her torture was so the her torture of the slaves. I'm gonna get back into it, but this is before I even get into it, this is how bad the torture was. The torture was literally so bad that two slaves tried to escape. The first slave was a man. Um, I'm not quite sure what he did, but whenever she was about to go and attack him for whatever it is that he did, he jumped out the window to his death. And he jumped out the window of the, I think it was like the first, not the first, he jumped out of like the second or third floor window and the building is, is pretty high. And the window that he jumped out of, um, they actually like cemented it and it's still like that today. Like you can definitely see like the window that he jumped out of and it's just like a cement block that's covering everything. So that's that. Um, there was another girl, a female slave. Um, she was like her... I guess you can call it like a handmaiden. Yeah, so um, it's rumored that her handmaiden brushed her hair and like snagged her a bit. And when she did that, like Delphine lost her shit and she started like running after the girl. She was trying to attack her and everything. Well, sis did the same thing and she jumped out the window as well. And when she jumped out the window, um, Delphine decided to go and like gather up her body and she buried her on the property and people saw her like go they saw the whole thing they saw her like jump out of the window they saw no she didn't jump out of the window I'm sorry she escaped while she was running from her she escaped she went on to the top of the roof of the mansion and when she got on the roof she jumped to her death so witnesses saw it and as an effort to do well in an effort to do damage control Delphine actually went outside gathered her body and buried it on the property but people like literally saw her doing this so when they saw this they actually like went to the local police and they reported it y'all not gonna believe what happened as a result this gonna piss you off so they went to the police the police came to the house. She was fined $300 and she was forced to sell nine of her slaves. Right. So Miss Girl went and bought the slaves back after she sold them. Like she sold them and then she went and bought them back. So when she bought them back, the police didn't say anything because they did their part. They did what they were supposed to do. Like she was okay to go back and get the slaves that she sold. Cause she sold them, she did her part. So they were just like, eh, she went and got the slaves back. It's cool, it's whatever. It's just fucked up. So she went and bought her slaves back and it just, it didn't get better. It got worse before it got better. Um, She had like a, another torturing device that would break the bones of the slaves like this is this is so hard to talk about because it literally happened so close to where i live and it's just oh my god and i've been to the house and i'll get into that later i'm jumping ahead of myself i'm sorry y'all this is tough like this is tough she would break the bones of the slaves and she would like position them so that when their bones healed, they would resemble like a crab. It's just so disgusting. Like the torture that they had to endure. I could not imagine like who thinks of this stuff. You have to be a very sick person to think of some shit like this, like for real. And there were a lot of deceased slaves including the ones that were on the top floor where the torture chamber and everything was um they were already dead and there were more that unfortunately perished in the fire 
and she decided to just flee so that she wouldn't have to you know face what she did so she decided to flee well she and um she and her third husband uh dr lollery they actually like kind of rekindled their romance i guess um he was asked about the um he was asked about the supposed treatment of the slaves and he actually made a statement and in that statement he basically was like it's just best if you mind your business so yeah that was very insane so i guess he decided to like run away with her to like keep himself from catching too much flack because that could have ruined his business because you know he was a chiropractor and everything so it could have potentially ruined his business so i guess that's why he you know decided to just go ahead and leave with her so he was originally from france so they basically just went back to france and um her children ended up coming because she left without her children so after they destroyed the house um she was reunited with her children and basically like her entire family was in france with her um it's rumored that towards the end of her life um she had like a life-threatening illness and it's also assumed that she just wasn't able to beat it good and she you know she fell sick and she passed away there was a plaque that was found in the saint louis cemetery I don't know how it got there. Nobody knows how it got there. It's just been an ongoing mystery. But the plaque basically said, you know, Marie Dauphine, Dauphine, that's a street. Oh my God. Um, it basically said Marie Delphine McCarty Lollery, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, McCarty Lollery. And it had the day that she was born, March 19th of 1787, and the day that she passed. Um, she was buried in Paris, but following everything that happened, I think in 1878 or something like that, um, her body was actually exhumed and sent back to New Orleans and she is currently buried in St. Louis Cemetery number one. So, and that's actually like the Haunted Cemetery, which is crazy. So yeah, that is the end of Delphine's story. Um, There are also rumors that she did not finish off her life. Well, that she did not finish out her life in France, especially considering that the day that she passed, it was December 7th. It's December 7th is the day that she allegedly passed, but rec that's the day that was on the plaque that they found. Um, the records in Paris actually have her date of death as December 9th. So there's really no telling. Um, it's also been rumored that she came back to New Orleans under an alias and finished out her life here. But because they have records of her being in Paris, I just don't think that that's, I don't think that that's true. That is the tragic story of Marie Delphine McCarty Blanc Lollery. Now, let's talk about the house because I'm pretty sure that you've heard the house is haunted. It is. The house is very haunted. Um, it's very creepy too. Um, so again, the house is located. I mean, if y'all want to go see it, y'all can. Um, I've been to the house before and every time I go to the house, I get a very eerie feeling and weird things start happening like in my personal life. Like when I get home and stuff and I'm no longer at the house, I feel like that spirit just kind of lashes itself onto me and follows me wherever I go. Um, the house is located on again uh roy the corner of royal street and governor nichols um it's a pretty big house like it takes up just about the whole block honestly like you you cannot miss the house you can't miss it it's right there like you know it when you see it um 
they decorate it for Halloween and stuff. I don't know why, because it's already creepy enough. Like, I've stood across the street and still felt, like, the presence of the house. Like, it's just... It's just... It's, it's insane, y'all. Like, it's really insane. Um, I mean, I've been to the house maybe, like... I think I've been to... I've been to the house maybe like three or four times but I went because I had people that were like coming into town to visit that had never been there before and I was like eh, all right let's let's go look at it but I will always tell them like don't stand too close to that house for real because the closer you get to it the worse it is like I literally I went to a um I went to a Mardi Gras parade and the Mardi Gras parade actually came down Royal Street and my boyfriend and I actually decided to sit in front of the house because it was just it was an empty space and y'all know I'm short so I can't really see over a whole lot of people at a parade anyway because when you go to a Mardi Gras parade people are like in your face and you can't see nothing if you're not tall so um we decided to stand nobody else was standing by the house so we just decided to stand like literally directly in front of the house and we kind of had like a little joke going saying like the first person to get uncomfortable and asked to move loses but because we both stubborn nobody said anything even though i was like very uncomfortable like i did not like i did not like sitting in front of that house like i kid you not i, I feel like the curtains was moving the curtains was moving I felt like somebody was going to like grab me through the window because I was sitting in front of like the front window. I felt like somebody was going to grab me through the window. I just, I didn't know what to think of it. It was just, it was a hot ass mess y'all. Like to make matters even worse, um, the actor Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage, I don't know why he did this, but he bought the house. He bought the house. He slept in it for one night. And he never set foot in that house again, ever. He never went back. So that should tell you something. I don't know why he bought the house in the first place. Because that's just very weird to me. But hey, boo, do you. That's what you want to do, do you. Um, I'm not sure what exactly. Um, he, he no longer owns the house. Um, the house belongs to the state of louisiana in the city of new orleans um i'm not sure if he sold it back to the state or if he sold it back to the city or if he just stopped paying for it and they foreclosed on it um i've heard both honestly but needless to say he don't own that house no more like he slept in it for one night and he never set foot in there again like he he just never went back I, from standing outside of the house, I can feel like a, a presence. So I cannot imagine actually going inside and spending the night. Like, oh my God, I would never. And he, um, yeah, he never set foot in the house again. And I want to say they used to do like tours. They did. They used to do tours at Lollery Mansion. But they had to stop because people would go in there and lose their shit. Like, terrible things would happen whenever they would go in the house. People would have, like, people with no history of epilepsy would start, like, having seizures in the house. Some people would, like, faint. A lot of people would, like, get, like, violently ill and, like, start throwing up and stuff. Like, it's just... It's just not a good place to be. So they stopped doing tours of the house because of the crazy things that were happening whenever people would come and visit. So the house is now just, it's just sitting there. Like they can't tear it down because like it's a historic site. So they keep it up, but they don't do tours anymore. Um, if you come to New Orleans and you want to do like a, we have ghost tours here because I'm going to keep it real with y'all. This whole city is haunted. Like, the entire city. We have a haunted cemetery. They have the Sultan's Place. Like, everything here is just haunted. And 
they can't tear it down because it's like a historically registered site or something like that but it's definitely just like something ain't right with the house i don't know if it's the spirit of the slaves i don't know if it's the spirit of the madam i don't i don't know what it is but something ain't right like i don't know anytime somebody goes into a house and they just immediately pass out something ain't right and I don't think that they should tear it down. I mean, the house is just sitting there. It's just sitting there collecting dust. I mean, I don't think anybody goes in there to like touch anything or nothing like that. I really just think it's just empty. I mean, they they installed cameras. Um, people have definitely attempted to like break into the house. So everything around the house, it's like iron bars all around the house that pretty that I'm I'm willing to bet weren't there when the house was still standing but a lot of people um I mean people probably tried to break into the house and that's probably what led to them putting the bars and everything up because everything is just everything is very secure um it's iron bars on all of the windows they have security cameras installed outside of the um outside of the front door and i think they have security cameras like all around the perimeter and the house is pretty big like the house is huge um there's actually i've never been in there because i, I have no reason to go in there i've never been inside the house but there is like if you you can google maps it and you can see like kind of what the house looks like it's built in like a big ass square like it's a big square property and if i'm not mistaken there's like a courtyard in the middle of the like in the middle of the property and that's where like some of the um bodies because we don't we don't have backyards here like especially if you live in the french quarter there's no such thing as a backyard in the french quarter so um they had a courtyard in the middle and in that courtyard is where it's rumored i think delphine is mad at me yeah uh clearly i just pissed delphine off because in the middle of me recording my ring light which is plugged into my wall completely went out i mean completely went out like the whole thing just went out um my studio light was still on but i need my ring light and my ring light was off i'm not gonna play with delphine today because baby i tell you one thing she ain't have hands but i do and i will put hands and feet on her for my ancestors that was so strange like nothing like that has ever happened while i was recording and then you mean to tell me that when i'm recording this video all of a sudden my ring light go out coincidence i don't think so i don't play with ghosts i don't play them ghost games at all but anyways before delphine rudely interrupted me the house has a courtyard in the middle of the property and i think that's where it's rumored that um some of the slaves are still buried um they were able to recover the bodies that were on the third floor um because when they stormed into the house and everything you know they were bringing out the slaves that were still alive um out of all of the slaves that were still alive only one of them um only one of the survivors actually passed away and they passed away like a few days later because of the injuries that they sustained throughout the fire but um as far as like the other i think they rescued like nine i think they rescued nine of them and the rest of them were of course dead that's so tragic the house is haunted for sure and again we're not sure if the house is haunted because of the slave spirits that are there but there's definitely a presence whenever you are in the area of the house like you can be walking down governor nichols coming up on royal street and you can just feel like a shift and i cannot explain 
but it's a very uncomfortable shift. If any of you watch American Horror Story, um, they season three coven with the witches and stuff, they kind of touched on, um, they touched on Madame Lollery a little bit. That's where a lot of people um, know her from, but we knew in Louisiana, of course, we knew who she was before that part of the show, well, before that season of the show came out. Um, they usually tell it to us as like a little ghost story or, you know, if you are in the, um, I'm of my, my mom's side of the family is Creole. So I knew who she was like all throughout me growing up. So that's no, it's no secret on my side. Um, that's how I know a lot of the information. Um, I did have to like do a little bit of research on the husbands and like certain dates and stuff like that but for the most part the only thing that i really knew was like everything that happened like inside the house and you would think that because i know what's ha what happened in the house i wouldn't go over there but honestly after the last time i went over there i probably won't go again just because of the things that happened after I left the house. I'm not gonna go into detail because it's just very personal. But um, a lot of like bad things started happening as a result of that. Like I had bad luck for about a month. They do offer like ghost tours in the city where they take you throughout the French Quarter. And I, I haven't taken a ghost tour, so I don't really know what it entails entirely but i have seen them um bring the tourists to the lollery mansion to like look at it they don't go too close um the tour guys they don't get too close and they kind of advise the um the tourists to not go too close either just so that you don't get like that bad spirit on you and some of them choose to listen and then you know you always got that one in the bunch that's like well i don't want to go see how bad the presence is and they just like stand there and it's all like hoots and hollers and giggles and laughs and shit until bad things start happening to you like yeah they offer the tours some of them choose to still go and they decide to like take pictures in front of the property and stuff actually i think that's how you get bad luck when i think it's because i've been to the house like i said i've been to the house like three or four times and i've never had anything bad happen yeah so i, I think you're in the clear as long as you don't take pictures of the house or in front of the house um i and the only reason I say that is because I've been to the house before and nothing bad has happened to me. Um, well, I lied. I lied. Um, one time I went to the house, literally that same night, I got into a fist fight. I don't know if that was because of the house or what, but it fit, it's fitting. Um, went to the house, later on that night, got into a fist fight. Um, and... I went there again and I when I went the first well when I went the day I got into the fist fight I actually like I took a picture of the house um but I wasn't thinking nothing of it until the second incident happened um me my my boyfriend and I took a picture we took two pictures in front of the house and we both had bad luck for a month like both of us well, his bad luck lasted a little bit longer than mine, but we both had bad luck. And I'm thinking it's because we took that picture in front of the house. Like, that's so strange. But yeah, um, those are my thoughts on the whole house situation. Um, and that's just the house. That ain't even like everything that she's done. Um, there are a lot of claims that say that everything that she did was um, exaggerated by people over the years because in the 1600s there was a hungarian countess by the name of i finally remembered her name there was a hungarian countess by the name of elizabeth bathory and 
she actually inflicted some of the same types of torture on the people in Hungary. She had like similar methods of torture that kind of matched like some of the alleged torture of um, that Madame Lollery forced her slaves to endure. So nobody's really exactly sure. I mean, hello, I wasn't born until 1995. That was 200 years before my time. So I don't know what happened. That was a hundred years before my time. Girl, I cannot do math. Um, yeah, that was like a hundred years before my time. So I really don't know. All I know is like, you know, the things that were told to me, but it doesn't seem far-fetched whatsoever. So it's actually like somewhat believable. Um, I definitely do believe that. And just because another person did something, that could have been her inspiration. Who's to say that she didn't do the exact same thing that Elizabeth Bathory did? because i definitely believe it and the proof was definitely there like nobody's gonna sit here and lie and say that she did all of this chaotic shit and it didn't happen at all because if it didn't happen at all somebody would have definitely been like yeah miss girl this never happened there's no proof of it happening whatever whatever but there was definitely proof of the machine um if you've seen the american horror story season i think that they when they do like their flashback modes and stuff i think they actually did do a flashback mode of the um some of the torture i mean of course it's like very dramatized and tv safe so if you care to like kind of get an idea of what happened but like a pg-13 idea of what happened um it's it's pretty well depicted in the show like enough to give you an idea of it but not to like actually show you what happened um but yes they have very similar methods of torture so it's rumored that people like through passing the story down it's rumored that some people may have gotten their um may have gotten their stories a little mixed up and tried to put some of what elizabeth bathory did onto what madame lollery did um i think otherwise i think that she actually did do whatever they accused her of doing because they don't have no reason to lie on her and because if it wasn't true why did she run away to paris you know what i'm saying you wouldn't run away if you're not guilty and because like the people in the street, when she was fleeing in her stagecoach, like the people were trying to drag her out of her stagecoach because they was trying to whoop her ass because they were like, oh no, you file not on my watch, like that type of stuff. And then the even crazier part is when the stagecoach came back and she wasn't on it, they cut up even more. Like they set the carriage on fire and they stabbed the horses to death. So, pretty sure you can imagine how outraged everybody was. What did the horses do? Oh, the horses took her to the docks at Lake Pontchartrain and that's how she escaped. So we gonna blame the horses. I don't know if they did anything to the, um, the stagecoach driver stagecoach stagecoacher whatever they call i don't know if they did anything to the slave that was the stagecoach um but i do know that they destroyed the carriage and they um stabbed the horses to death which is a little dramatic if you ask me okay and this is the finished look if you don't care about the makeup um this is the end of the video for you um if you did care about the makeup i'm just gonna real quick run through all the products that i used because i'm not gonna feel like putting it all in the description box so um if you don't care about the makeup thank you so much for watching um do not forget to like comment and subscribe on your way out um if you do care about the makeup i'm gonna go ahead and get into everything that i used so you already know the drill eyebrows uh maybelline brow ultra slim and this is in the color 260 deep brown for my um to clean up my brows i use the la girl pro conceal in the shade cool tan for my eyes i use the bh cosmetics mimosa palette and it just ugh, this is what it looks like it's literally so cute it's very brunch um i used happy hour raspberry and bubbly to get the eye look 
um for foundation i use the nars natural radiant longwear foundation and i am in the shade tahoe for primer you already know milk hydro grip primer concealer under eye and everything else uh the Too faced born this way concealer and i'm in the shade warm sand contour and maybelline fit me in 360 mocha all over face powder um maybelline fit me 330 toffee blended everything out with my sonia cash sponge that is very dirty and needs washing urban decay perversion mascara per usual um lashes y'all already know to deal with the lashes i use the same lashes every time they came in a love me box i do not know the name of them i don't think they have a name i think it's the same lashes every time i have like three pairs of them that's all i know um to blush i almost forgot i'm a blush girl now so i have the elf blush quad and i you shit open I have the elf blush quad and I just use this deeper color right here for my blush for a highlight I use the Fenty Beauty kilowatt foil and this is in sandcastle and minted mojito um I use sandcastle for my highlight under eye powder was the Ben Nye luxury banana powder and I lined my lips with the NK lip pencil in medium nude and for my gloss this is the Colourpop Luxe gloss and this is in the shade twinning and it's actually the Gemini lip gloss um so that's everything that I use in this video um thank you so much for watching again just like the people that left do not forget to like comment and subscribe Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, this was fun and I enjoyed it. I am going to go watch The Godfather and I hope you guys have a good night and that's it. See you guys in my next video.